Hopkins. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Top of the morning to everyone. My God. Well, listen, those that are coming on air, I had myself a most fantastic rest last night. I'm woke. I'm ready and I'm up, praise God, ready to do some teaching on everyday life. You know, I always like to give what I call everyday practical teaching for everyday living. So I trust as you are coming on that the Lord will bless you. Glory be to God that he will, that his spirit and his grace will rest upon you. And Father, as I pray this morning, I ask your Holy Spirit to help your people to come away from being fixers that get involved in things and find themselves almost drowning because they did not use sound wisdom on the things they got engaged with. Good morning, good morning, everyone, and a blessed day to you all. I'm trusting you that are on YouTube that this blesses you as well. Well, what I do, most of you know me, I'm Apostle Hopkins. I am a minister, a Christian for, uh, foremost, amen, and I'm also a counselor. So we deal with, uh, we do counseling every day, amen. You can go on our website at pilgrimsministry.org, glory be to God, and you can uh, sign up, glory be to God. There is a fee for my time because it's not a church service, amen. It is a service that we're in. I counsel people for 45 minutes in our sessions, amen. Good morning, Michelle Brown. Good to see you, sister, amen. God bless all of you. Hello, God bless you. Amen. Good morning to everyone. Well, look, let me go on and jump into this message because I've got to go to work in a few minutes. Amen. Starting counseling sessions throughout the day all over the world. Well, look, how to discern when it's time to step back from being a fixer. I'm coming out of the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. And it reads like this. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. Now, the reason why I use this verse, because some of you that are listening at me, glory be to God, it's the time and the season where you learn how to draw back and stop trying to fix everything for everyone. There's a grave difference in being someone that is helping someone. That means you're giving them strength to accomplish an end. Then someone, glory be to God, that is just getting involved with things because it's your habit of life and sometimes it's wanted and sometimes it's unwanted but you do more stressing and worry and even you do more change than the one you're trying to help now most of us have people in our lives like that being a person that has compassion and wants to help everybody you have to understand and discern by the holy spirit on and sound wisdom when your help is not helping an individual but enabling them and in some cases glory be to god they're stepping back letting you do you stress you worry while they are continuing the same cycle that they will not deal with now well now listen listen when you are a fixer you overcompensate for someone else's lack of responsibility i'm gonna say it again when you are a fixer you overcompensate for someone else's lack of ability responsibility now stay with that thought because in hearing what i'm about to say is i'm not talking about teaching people how not to help people we need to help people god we need to discern who god is telling us to help that's not what i'm speaking against or what i'm talking about right now is learning when the season of time where you are involved with trying to fix or what you might call help someone it's time for you to back up and let them grow. And see that? Now, why do I use the word overcompensate? The word overcompensating means it's characteristic by taking excessive measures and attempting to correct or make amends for an error, weakness, or problem. And in this case, someone else's. I'm going to say it again. The word overcompensate is characterized by taking excessive measures and attempting to correct or make amends for an error, weakness, or problem, and in this particular teaching of someone else. Could be a family member, could be a friend. It could be you just jump in and get in the middle of stuff that the person is not even asking you, nor are the person doing anything for themselves in that area. And in Ecclesiastes 3, 1, there is everything. There is a season and a time for every purpose under the sun. I'm talking more about you 
as a fixer and why you have the need to feel like you've got to jump in and fix everything for everyone when sometimes the Holy Spirit wants to help them grow, wants to help them get closer to him. And sometimes natural and spiritual maturity is tied to what we go through. Now, I'm saying this because most of the time you have to talk carnal in this world to people. There are people in all of our lives that the reason why they're not growing is because they've been groomed and they've taken an attitude, sometimes even entitled, to feel like they don't have to change. Others just have to clean up what their lack of change causes in their life. Now, let me give you go through a list for you to recognize and to deal with. Number one, now you are a fixer that must change when you go around picking up small crises or large crises. In other words, when something comes up in life, in the family, on the job, you feel it's your place to fix it. Now, by the way, now you will also find yourself becoming stressed over it, losing sleep over it, feeling like you have to do something while the ones who are involved are laid back and chilled. Be very careful of knowing when to stop taking on crisis. Are you hearing me? There's a time you need to realize whether the crisis is big or small, find out whether God wants you to be involved in it or even how long. And in some cases, we do thing, we do the same cycle of doing things for people so long until it's expected by them and they never grow in that area. Number two, you often find yourself are stressed out mostly over the problems that have nothing to do with you. Now, I have an amazing family. I don't have a perfect family. I say what are amazing, because one of the things that my mother and my family has taught us is to help people, to help family, and to do for people. And that is a great principle, and it is an awesome principle. But here goes the only problem with that. We stress out over problems sometimes that have nothing to do with us. Sometimes we find ourselves getting involved with things and putting ourselves in the middle of something that no one asked us to fix. And that is a danger. Now, part of that is a learned behavior. And another part of it is a manifestation of control. Are you hearing me? Along with the fixer component is also a measure of control. You feel like, I got this. I got to get in there and do something about it. But let me help you. God has designed that we all have trials, tribulation, and situations. And they all lean back to faith in him. Now, once again, to someone that is listening at my, what, what I'm saying, I'm not saying don't help people. I'm saying be very careful of operating under being a fixer. This message is about how to discern when it's time to step back from being a fixer. Uh, number three, uh, you tend to bring the people in your life tends to be people with problems. Tends to be people, you know, uh, tend, you, you tend to gravitate towards people with drama. You can't fix them, but you gravitate towards that. When one project, in, uh, when you get free of one project, you take on another project in life. Listen to my heart what I'm saying here. Many of us, if we would look at our lives, think about it. What type of person did you date? You might want a man or a woman in your life, but you always tend to gravitate towards, if you're a fixer, you will gravitate towards people that need to be fixed. And what happens is, once you get them in your life, you find yourself doing everything for them, but they're never able to reciprocate because you just brought into your life someone that has lived a quite a while with being in that mentality that others have to do or clean up what they mess up. Are you hearing me? I got that. So the people you date, glory be to God, comes with a whole lot of baggage and you are there to unpack it. And then you wonder why. Why do I keep always getting people that tend to just drain me and pull on me? It is because you have in your life a component of being a fixer. You, you're by nature, you like dealing with projects. A real relationship is not one-sided, 
and a real relationship is not always having to clean up behind someone else where they just won't do for themselves. A real compensating relationship is there is a strength in them and there's a strength in you and you compensate each other. And yes, sir, yes, ma'am, there will be times that one needs the other's help in an area where they are unable to help themselves. But the advice you give and the help you give will be heeded, will be received, and they will grow from it and they will go from it. Everybody got that. I mean, also, sometimes you feel like if you're a fixer, you have the answer for everyone's problem. I'm going to tell y'all right now, I do not have the answer for everyone's problem. I do, I cannot solve everyone's problem. I've come to grip with that. And there were times when I've had to tell people, even in counseling, I've had to tell people, I think you need to see someone else who is more knowledgeable and more proficient in this area that you're seeking because I, I, I reach, you, you reach into something that I don't have depth into. If you are a fixer, you try to, you, instead of telling someone to reach out and search deeper, you go search it out for them. You go do it. And what happens is you end up stopping the person from growing, stopping the person from maturing in that area so that they can learn how to deal with life. Look, I've seen this in families raising children, where they would where they would raise children so sheltered and don't, now here in my heart, they would raise them so sheltered they would never let them do for themselves, and by the time they started getting into the young teen years, into the young adult years, they are incapable of dealing with simple things in life. Why? Because in order to even in a family to bring some children to the place of maturity, you have to allow them to fix some of their own problems. Are you hearing me? If you are always fixing it for them, who's gonna do it when you're gone? Who's gonna do it when they get out in society? Are you hearing me? This is basically the simple principle of, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach him the fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And not you doing it, but what you have empowered them to do. I'm going to tell you something. We are living in the most amazing time of empowerment. And I believe that the people like me that are here, we're only on these shows. We're only on these teaching, mentoring classes to help people not only to get delivered from strongholds, but also get delivered from strongholds that relate to behaviors in our life. And there is a behavior in some of our lives, I have to watch this in my life because I am a person that is a strong person that is a fixer. And I have to draw back sometimes and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I am supposed to help that person become empowered to help themselves. I'm not supposed to be there trying to solve every problem, answer every question. Sometimes it takes us learning that we do who are fixers to know when to discern it's time to step back from being a fixer. Listen at this. When you are a fixer, you you schedule your life around doing things for someone else until you don't have time for yourself. Did you hear what I'm saying? When you are a fixer, you take your life and it you move from one drama to the next, getting involved in it while complaining that it's draining you. Are you hearing me? Listen to me real good. When you reach a place in your life, even with family or friends, where in the situation that they've got you involved with, it's draining you, stressing you, taking all your time, you can't rest, they sleep like a baby. They won't move and do for themselves, and you gotta do. You are actually in over your head. And at that point, you're gonna have to draw back. You don't have to be radical. You don't have to do cold turkey drawing back, but you're gonna have to draw back and let them stay, start taking responsibility. I'll use a simple thing here. This is a simple example. I knew of a person one time that their son needed a job. Now, their son was about 22 years old living in the basement, okay? No problem. Every now and then, you have to go home and live with mom and them. It takes time. I get it. But the, mo the mother was calling around for jobs for the son. There would be nothing wrong with, with her helping her son 
with that leg work, but her son would not search for a job for himself. Now there's a problem there. And the problem is that mother or that father has been has actually trained that young man to to always lay back and let someone else fix things for him. Now it might feel good. I'm doing this for my child. I'm doing this for this and that and the other. That's the problem. You keep doing everything for the person and they never become active or engaged themselves. There comes a time and a season that you got to break that stuff up, sweetie bye. There comes a time and a season that you have to pull back and allow them to grow and to go. And when I talk to these people that think like this, I say to them, is your son calling any himself? Well, well, you always make an excuse why a person who is healthy, strong, and can do for themselves, you always make an excuse why you should be the one, are you hearing me, to jump in and do something for someone who can do for themselves. There is a time and a season, whether it's family or friends, that you have to learn to draw back. Now, somebody listening at me right now, and I'm not talking prophetic here. I'm not going to try to get all super spiritual, because guess what? I'm talking about common everyday life. Hello. Amen. I'm not going to try to be super spiritual, but I'm going to tell you, there's someone out there listening at me that you are so frustrated. You're so angry at someone in your life or in your family that you're saying, I get tired of doing everything. Well, my dear friend, remember, People can only do or expect out of you what you allow. A fixer creates the climate that he or she is living in. Did you hear what I said? A fixer sends off a message that's like a signal that will draw to them people who only want them to do for them who won't do for themselves. And, you'll, and that's a learned behavior that has to be broken. There comes a time and a season, and I'm talking, today is prayer for the fixers. Today is examination for the fixer. Not the person who leans on you, but right now, today is for you. Yes, you are frustrated, you are aggravated, you are angry, and the reason why is because you have created an unrealistic dynamic in your family and life. It is unrealistic to do everything for everybody. Now, to once again, to the carnal minded, I'm not talking about helping people sometimes. I'm not talking about trying to support someone. I'm talking about you doing what others will not do for themselves, but are able to do it. And uh, you, you make you listen to this. You are your motivation. A man is constantly being hindered by the time that you're putting in someone else that should be dealing with stuff themselves. In other words, you are unable to finish things in your own personal life and the things that you have to do. Why? Because you have jumped in and become a fixer. Also, fixers are people with very compassionate heart. Amen. When a fixer has a compassionate heart and that heart sometimes gets played. Are you hearing me what I'm saying to you? That heart that you have sometimes it causes you to get played. You have to fully acknowledge that, look, I, in me, there is a thing in me that tries to fix things for others. You have to take ownership to change it. I constantly date and bring people in my life that I, that I have to fix. My life is loaded with bringing projects in my life that I freak out about. But now let me tell you something. There are real valid ministries. I'm talking about ministries, and there are real valid people who God has a grace on their life to help people. But the wisdom that even a ministry or a social organization or you as an individual has to come to, you have to know when all the things you put in place is not really helping the person because they're not helping themselves. And in that case, you have to discern when the season and time is for you to back out. Are you hearing me? Now, before I go, I'm gonna give you some examples, people, some simple stuff. Uh, let me tell you, tell you one great good example that I heard the other day. I was riding, listening at the radio, and there was an agency. It, it, was, a, it was ministry based, it was faith based, but it was an agency, I think it was in Florida. What this agency would do is, it would help 
people that have lost everything or people that are homeless or people that were in crisis situation probably coming out of jail it helped with those areas and the, and the teacher on the radio said these words it stuck with me they said what we do is in the developing of what we are doing in our agency is we help the person we help them get employed we have a, a we have a set of rules for them to get active doing for themselves then when they get to a certain place, we build them up so they can find a place and be on their own. We will, but if that person does not work along with the process to help themselves change, then we will have to actually let them go from the program. And it made complete sense to me because if not, they would only have folks that would come in, lay off on the benefits, but never actually move on to a place called next and productivity and stream. The goal of everything in life, the goal of life itself is for one to find themselves at a place for not only they need help, they take the help and become self-sufficient and then not forget the help that they got. Are you hearing me? And I say it again, not forget the help that they got. But there is a time, some of you, you're frustrated with family members. I'm tell you, you find yourself angry. you are even gone off on them to the point until you almost resent them when they come by. My dear friend, you don't want that to be in your heart. But when the fixing dynamic has turned on you, and eventually it will. I'm going to say this to you right now. When you are a fixer, which is not designed for what God really wanted us to be. He did not want us to become an answer to everyone's problem to the point that the person is unable to function for themselves. God never wanted us to be an enabler of someone's stronghold in their life. He wants us to be a helper. He wants us to be compassionate. He wants us to care. But he does not want us doing everything for someone until they're unable to function or until they got a mentality and an attitude that they are entitled to be treated this way. I remember telling a person, I said, you know what? I said, I figured you out. You create situations and problems and other people pay for the problem you create. Now, I had to detach myself from that type of dynamics because when I went in trying to help, my help was minimal. I noticed that the more I did, the less they did for themselves. After a while, it was expected that I would do for them. And I had to set them down and say, listen. And by the way, the way to start pulling yourself out of this is don't get just get mad. Don't get angry. Set down before you go off. I'm going to get ready to close, but I'm going to leave this with you guys. Set down with the person that is relying on you to constantly do things for them and be honest with them. Be completely honest with them. Actually, if you are a married couple, because this happens in, in couples, where one of the one or the other in that relationship says, you know what, you can't keep fixing things for this boy or this girl, for this young man or this young woman. And you may find yourself, your heart, remember, you're a fixer. You got a big heart that thinks that love is doing everything for somebody. That is not love. That is a misinterpretation of love. I can love you with a, I can love you dearly, but also let you grow let you go and deal with life not throw you out there with no help that's not what i'm talking about but there comes a time even in families where one will say look you're constantly doing for this person and you need to back up and evaluate whether all you're doing is any real help because if you find out that you and your mate are at each other fussing and arguing Y'all, we're always fussing over that boy. We're always fussing over that girl. That is a sign that something is imbalanced in this situation. That is a sign where you need to back up and check your season. Check whether it is time for you to listen at your mate who is not tied emotionally like you are to find out if you need to evaluate whether you're really helping that individual. So that's number one. Find out whether you're really helping them. Number two, sit down with them and tell them what you have observed in your relationship in their lives. Look, if you kept coming by my house, 
trying to borrowing money all the time. Family member, friend, or whatever. If you kept only coming by when you wanted a few dollars, you know what my question would be to you? I think I have a right if I have to keep paying for what you do, paying for what you want, I think I should have a voice. Now, somebody may say, well, brother, Hopkins, death control. Yes, it is. I Listen, there's such a thing as healthy control with what I do with my life, my energy, my resources, and myself. Boom! There is healthy. I believe if you're leaning on me that hard, I believe it is my place to sit down with you and say, can we talk? And, and listen, and listen, listen, one of the things that the enemy uses against fixers is you are all you are available, but you're not confrontational. In other words, someone can keep coming to you, repeating the same act, repeating the same thing until it frustrates you. But you're non confrontational. And I'm, I'm talking about positive confronting. I'm not talking about negatively going off on people. That's not what I'm talking about. But you, you need to confront it. When you have people living in your house, in your family, in your environment, friend, job, whatever, you need at some point to sit down and be honest with them and tell them, look, I tried to help you. And it seems like we keep going in a cycle where my help has to, you'll keep repeating the same thing. Here goes what I'm going to do. I'm going to help you this time, but the next time, I want to see whether there's some progress. I will only deposit in your life when I see you depositing in your change. Boom, did you hear that? I will only keep depositing in you when I see you depositing for your own change. Because here goes the deal. If you deposit in someone's life and they're making a change, guess what happened? Your deposit will come with interest. And I ain't just talking money, but I'm using currency as a way of conveying the thought that you need to stop doing for someone, even if it's a family member, where there is no change, where they're making no effort, where they create situations that causes you money. You can't always keep paying for the actions of another individual. It's not healthy, it's not fair, and it's not maturing the individual. It's not helping them deal with life. So that's number two confronting them and talking over the plans that you have for the season of next to get to the next place because some of you are stuck that's right you are stuck with a person that you have opened the door of helping them and they are not doing anything to help themselves and you feel like oh my god i gotta do this no you don't what you have to do now is actually confront the situation in the time and the season it is. In the beginning season, they needed help and you were trying to help them. As time went by, you're seeing a pattern where your help is not helping them, but working you. Now the season where you are now is, how do I help you to confront the fact that you are stuck in a cycle, my friend, I'm trying to help you, but my help is no good as long as you're not trying to help yourself. Therefore, I'm backing up. I'm not keeping engaging this thing alive. Are you hearing me? And number three is the crisis of disengagement. Say it with me, the crisis of disengagement. Brother Ivory, what in the world is the crisis of disengagement? How they will go ballistic when you stop doing what they're normally used to from you. Listen. Life actions are just like a drug or some type of addiction. You can do things with your life with another person so long until they have grown accustomed to expecting that from you. And just like a drug of addiction, when you say, I've got to start changing because this dynamic is not working for you and it's not fair for me and you're not growing either. When you start making that change, they are going to feel what, what, what? They're going to feel betrayed. They're going to feel abandoned. They're going to feel you dropped them. And all of those feelings, betrayed, abandoned, and dropped, is not what's happening. Now you're going to have to own, got that, take responsibility, got that, and start doing things for yourself. That is not wrong. I told you, now at this point, they're at that season that you're going to have to back off 
and their reaction is they may get angry, they may get frustrated, and sometimes here goes what people like this do. They move on to someone else to keep alive something in their life that they're refusing to take responsibility and actions for. I trust that you hear what I'm saying to you. What was those three stages of going out? One, someone in your life that is that is conscious that you're doing this, that loves you, tells you you can't keep doing this. You can't keep spending money on someone that's not doing anything productive. You cannot keep doing always what they should do for themselves. And they tell you, and you're completely frustrated, angry, and aggravated because that's where you're stuck at. It's time to sit change. Number two, you wean them off. You let them know you have a healthy conference confrontation with them, conversation with them. I'll use that if it's better. You have a healthy conversation with them, telling them why we have to make a change if you are continually looking for me to help you. And then third is releasing them. And they may not like it. Some people, when you release, they like it, they love it, they learn. And others are frustrated because in their mind, there has been a mindset that others should help them, always helping them, always doing for them. Please, I will never forget this. And I hope my son would not be, uh, uh, be aggravated that I shared this. My son went through a season in his life. By the way, my son today is incredible. He's, he's not perfect. He's a human being. He like his daddy and mama. We ain't perfect. Neither is he. But my son went through a stage in his life wherein our help wasn't helping him. Our abilities and resources and even our wisdom wasn't helping him. And he had to face life. He had to face life and deal with his stuff. Today, that young man is awesome. Are you hearing me what I'm saying to you? But he never was able to grow to the place of next. I'll never will forget one day he said to me, because remember, I didn't always know this wisdom I'm sharing with you guys. I wasn't always here. There was a time, glory be to God, that I was that fixer. Remember, I wrote the book, Breaking the Spirit of the Fixer's Control. Matter of fact, if you would like to get a, a copy or order that book, it's on Amazon.com, or you can get it off of our website, pilgrimsministry.org, pilgrimsministry.org. And the name of the book is Breaking the Spirit of the Fixer's Control. You can get that book. On, on Amazon or on pilgrimsministry.org. But let me get back to what I'm saying as I get ready to end this subject. My son one day, I kept always being a helper, always doing. It wasn't Evelyn that was the problem. It was me. It was me. You're talking to me, the fixer. One day my son looked at me. I was He was trying to do something. And I said, well, I, 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 I'll get it for you. I'll fix it for you. I'll get it. It was a monetary situation. It was had to do with money. Now, mind you, he was a grown man. Got that? Mind you, he had went out there on his own now. No longer under daddy or mama's care. No longer in my wallet, but in his own. Having to face electric. Having to face rent. Having to face going to work. My God! And no one was giving him extra money. No one was running up fixing anything. And he was talking, just talking. Came by to see me, just talking. And I said, I'll get that for you. And my son turned around. I love this put his hand on my shoulder and when he did he said pop I said what's that he said pop I said yeah I can do that just come by he said pop pop stop pop stop I got this I don't need you to help me and I looked at him you know I was like what he said I got this and from that day forward we stopped helping him unless he asked and there has been rare to no time that he asks us for anything. Now, right now, him and his mom, Evelyn, are in a project renovating the house he grew up in. Uh, Evelyn has decided that him and I, are, him and her are going to renovate the place and what have you. And we will help a little bit and he will do a big bit for where he's going to be at. But the point was, from that day on, he broke off of himself from me. That young man, my son, had to break away from me being the fixer. It was him that broke it. It was him that said, uh-uh, you're not doing it anymore. Uh-uh, no. I'm a man. I'm, I'm an adult. I have to be responsible for my stuff. I have to take, and sometimes, hey, listen, nothing wrong with needing help. Nothing wrong with helping people. But there's a problem when that person has been taught to hold on to someone else doing for them. And then you keeping that alive. 
I was I was actually going to keep something alive in my son that would have destroyed him and messed him up. And my son, and as a young man, he looked at me and said, Pop, no. And I'm going to tell you, I looked at him and I stepped back and, and, and shook my head. I said, you got it. I said, I understand. He was saying to me, Pop, I'm a man. Pop, I got this. Pop, I can't keep leaning on you. You know what happened? He finally grew up. But had I, it was time now for me to grow up. Listen to me, my dear friend. I love you. But it's time for some of you to grow up. There is a time and a season for everything under the heavens. And just maybe right now it's time for you to stop being a fixer that's really not helping anything. Well, I'm going to get ready to get up out of here. This is Everyday Practical Living for Life with Apostle Hopkins. Sound wisdom and sound judgment. I teach deliverance. I do spiritual warfare. I do marriage counseling. I do counseling with business and situations. That's what we do. There is a fee for my time. I apologize. Not one inch for that because my time is valuable. Amen. And if you wanted to sign up to, for a counseling session or a session with me, there is this a 45-minute session. Glory be to God. This is what I do. I am not a pastor. I am overseer of a church, but I do not pastor a church. Are you hearing me? In the sense of having church members, that's not what I do. This is what I do. I train, I teach, I do seminars and what have you, webinars now and what have you. I'm actually not traveling now like I used to. That season is done in my life. I'm not jumping on planes and running through whole, uh, hotels because that's my season has changed. This part of my wisdom is counseling and, and information like you're hearing. Go to our website and check it out, pilgrimsministry.org, whether it's the deliverance or whether it is counseling. That's what we do now. I'm having a ball at it. Well, I'm going to get ready to go. I trust this wisdom that we shared is a blessing to you. And by the way, if you feel that this has blessed you and you want to make a donation to us, go to our cash app, General Ivory Hopkins. That's our cash app. And you can send a donation or a blessing, however the Lord deals with your heart. Or if you're just listening at these messages and just enjoying them, that's good with me too. Amen. But as I said, our cash app is General Ivory Hopkins, if you want to cash app us. Well, God bless you guys. Tell y'all like I always do. I want y'all to remember, what is it? God is watching. <laughs>